Hell on a dreary shore. Don't you dare touch the dial. Hell on a dreary Hell on a dreary shore. Don't you dare touch the dial. Don't you dare touch the dial Cause it's hell on Nigeria Hell on Nigeria Welcome back to Hello Nigeria. Thank you for staying with us. Of course, the conversation continues, and now we're going to be speaking about the Warif Boys Conversation Club. And we have Dr. De Silva Ibru in the studio with us to give us more information on exactly what goes down with this Boys Conversation Club and exactly what it stands for. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you very much for having me, Olive and Leila. It's Thank good to you. have you. <laughs> so I think it's very important that we're taking the conversation to the boys. We find that oftentimes people have complained that the focus has been on the girls for the longest time. Now the Boys Conversation. I Cafe is set to change preconceived notions and mindsets. What are some of these preconceived notions that you're set to change? Well, like you lightly said, many a time in the space that we work in, when we address rape, sexual violence, typically the more vulnerable group are women. And so when we focus on the services and assistance, we tend to spend a lot more time addressing the needs of young girls and women. And at the Women, um, women at Risk International Foundation, unapologetically so, we do that because they are the more vulnerable group. But during the time um, of addressing these issues and working with young girls and women and taking curriculum into secondary schools to educate these young girls and women, we very quickly realized that that was half of the problem. There's only so much you can do by protecting a young girl if you ignore the fact that a young boy is that potential perpetrator and he needs to be addressed as well. So we live in an environment where when we talk about rape and sexual violence, we forget to add that for every one in four girls that is a survivor before age 18, there's one in eight boys that's also a survivor of rape and sexual violence. We forget to mention that these boys living in circumstances and environments that are, you know, dysfunctional to say the least, are exposed to all sorts of atrocities. They see mom being brutalized by dad, they see um, pastors, they see school tutors and principals, you know, abusing their power of authority. And so as they grow up, they address this as their norm. And so we're then in an environment, in a community, in a society where these young boys aren't taught any different. And so therefore, as they reach adulthood, chances are that violence will beget violence and all of these cycles repeat themselves. So this is why we decided to establish the Boys Conversation Cafe. We decided that it would be an informal gathering, reason being that boys tend to respond better when it's a smaller and closed group. We thought that we would use a male-dominated environment by using male mentors, men that are of upstanding character, men that um, typically would have some experience mentoring already or not, Sometimes it's a small function of just having an interest in changing the lives and the narratives of these young boys. And we will bring them together in secondary schools. And then we will offer them specific guidelines. Now, the reason why we use guidelines and not curriculum is because there is no curriculum for boys in the whole of Nigeria when it comes to education and gender-based violence. And so what we had to do was we had to create focal group discussions with these young boys to understand what their issues were, what the um, problems were, what were the um, topics that they found very difficult to express, what was their understanding, what was their mindset. And the sad truth was, um, based on our data, I mean, over 52% of them thought it was perfectly normal to walk away when a girl was being abused. I mean, 86% of them felt that what she wore, yes, did impact on their decision-making process. And I believe 76% of them were addicted to pornography. And so again, when they watch these images, in their minds, that's what they would replicate when they're you know, brought together with the opposite sex. 
Now, this is, it's actually quite devastating to know that 86% believe that what a woman wore constituted to her being raped. And let's remember that these are children, young boys, between the ages of 13 and 18. And that's what's even scarier, because to develop a mindset at that young an age shows how rape is so deeply imbibed in our culture that it's okay to think that way. How do we start to destabilize that mindset and actually push forward and say, no, this is what is right? even if you've been told that this is what is right in the past. How do we do that and make sure it's sustainable? And that's exactly what we're trying to do with the Boys Conversation Cafe. We're trying to change that narrative. Mm. So we're saying to these young boys with this mindset and then their attitudes and their behavioral pattern as a result of this mindset that this is not the right way to behave. This is not the appropriate way to behave. So what we aim to achieve is to change the mindset. We aim to educate them so they're actually protectors and not just potential perpetrators or at worst, you know, you know, bystanders that have no interest in what's going on around them. And then to equip them, because as I said, one in eight of them are still survivors of this sad act. And many of them don't have the tools or equipped with the tools to even deal with um, the pressures and the issues that accompany rape and sexual violence at such a young age. Now, you've mentioned that one in eight boys are victims of abuse before they turn 18. Unfortunately, we live in a society that teaches men that you should not cry. We try to suppress the emotions of men. So we find that a lot of them are dealing with abuse, but there's nobody they can talk to because they're afraid of being criticized, they're afraid of being condemned, and some parents don't even notice when their children are being abused. So what would you say to parents? What helpful tips can we give to parents to help their young boys? So this is exactly themselves? what we're finding, Olive, <clears throat> in our conversation cafe. In addition to implementing the guidelines, the whole idea is to give them a safe space where they can talk about these issues. In addition to having a role model, we have silent facilitators that are trained by Warif that can observe and pick up the body language and, of course, from the conversation and the direction the conversation is going in, identify the specific young boy or child that needs additional assistance following on from these sessions. And yes, many of them don't have an outlet. Um, environment, traditional norms encourage boys to be that silent, strong individual. And yes, unfortunately, many of them that are survivors of rape and sexual violence have the added burden of not being able to speak about it. Now, we know there's a global stigmatization surrounding talking about rape and sexual violence, regardless of the gender, but even more so with boys, and more so in our cultural context, where we believe you know, a man has a particular role, and as you rightly said, crying or admitting to any form of weakness is unacceptable. So what do we say to parents? We say we start from upbringing. Bringing up our children shouldn't be very different. We shouldn't encourage boys to, to either have that entitlement issue, whereby, you know, young daughter, you go clean, while you young son go out and play with a soccer ball. We should start changing that. We shouldn't say to that young boy when he comes with questions, I mean, perhaps emotional vulnerable questions, we shouldn't disregard him and tell him, oh, that's not what boys say, or that's not how a boy should feel. And you know, then start questioning his masculinity because suddenly he begins to feel, well, maybe I'm not supposed to be this vulnerable person. And unfortunately, when something like that would happen, I don't have a safe space to come back and report it. And then organizations like ours, we need to be more expansive. We need to you know, be more inclusive, which is what we're trying to do with the Boys Conversation Cafe. And what is the, sorry, the response? What has it been like to the Boys Conversation Cafe? Oh gosh, the results we've had, uh, we just completed our first session. We had um, 40 boys in a cohort group, and um, the data that we've been able to collate so far confirms, first of all, 98% of them are now aware of what the laws are surrounding um, rape and sexual violence. When we started the session, only 2% were aware that if you are prosecuted for rape, that it's life imprisonment. 47% um, of them acknowledged that they would stop drinking alcohol because drug and alcohol was a, a huge concern. We had 100% of them admitting to going to strip clubs. We had 86% of them admitting to the use of tramadol and codeine. So we've had a drop in 66% in that regard. And then we've had 85% of them saying they will be those you know, good bystanders, they will be those protectors. And Happily, I can say 78% of them have agreed that you know, what a lady wears 
where she's going and the company she keeps has no bearing on, you know, whether or not, you know, he has that right to, you know, physically attack or, you know, sexually attack her. Hopefully we'll get to 100% on That's that one one day. I'm actually very exactly. excited that you're mentioning yeah. this, the fact that they're going to calm down, they're going to stop the use of drugs and alcohol, yeah. because today is the International Day Against the Use of Drugs and Trafficking, um, use of drugs, basically, um, drug abuse and illicit, illicit trafficking. But I, I think it's important we have this conversation a little more, because some people don't understand why drugs, why alcohol, why going to strip clubs play a role in this. Some people think, you know, it's the norm, it's fashionable. If my friends want to go to the strip club, I can go with them. Yeah. So that peer pressure alcohol, that you have. It's not really that much of a big deal. So how do we really address this? What is the relationship of this to the rape culture that we and have? And so this is, what we, this is what we say. This is part of the conversation that we have. As you said, I mean, there are certain activities that are carried out that are certainly untoward. I mean, if you lose any sense of inhibition with the use of drug or alcohol, chances are that your judgment is then, you know, compromised. And then you start to make questionable decisions and acts that, you know, typically, for instance, you know, perhaps, you know, with regards to a young girl in a setting, you might feel at that point in time that it is your right to insist on some form or the other, whether it's sexual harassment or actual, you know, physical violence or sexual violence. And so this is where the correlation is. And so we were very happy that um, many of them were honest enough to acknowledge that they did have these vices. And more importantly, that they appreciated the fact that, as you said, the relationship between having these vices and making these poor decisions, there was a direct connection. And so by you know, them, you know, well, at least committing to stopping these acts, I mean, that's certainly a step in the right direction. Now, one thing that's a bit shocking to a lot of people, including yourself, I believe, is the fact that if we look at the Nigerian constitution and if we look at the laws that we have in the country around sexual and domestic violence, we have a problem because it's quite gender-based in as much as it's very referenced towards women and there's nothing that's really stated to protect the men. And we're seeing this problem in our schools as well with the curriculums, like you said, in terms of no curriculum there for the boy-child. How do we start pushing for the right policies to be enacted into government to ensure that we are actually sending a message across saying that anyone can become a victim of sexual and domestic violence and anyone can perpetrate domestic or sexual violence? Like you rightly said, um, the one thing I should um, actually um, state here is that since they have amended, the, I mean, Olive being a lawyer, I believe, yes. you'll probably um, be able to shed some more light on this. They have actually expanded the whole role and definition of rape to include men. And this was during the amended um, act and that I was carried the out Lagos in 2015. Well. 2015. And then the Lagos state mm -hmm. laws have also been amended. And so now you do have scenarios where, you know, there is um, the rights are protected of not just girls and young women, but also boys How and young men. How enforced are these laws? Well, and that's what we need to do. We need to, you know, spend more time, I guess, um, educating and sensitizing our law enforcement. I think um, Lagos State, again, is doing wonderful work in that area. They now have gender desks in quite a few police stations, and these are specifically trained police officers that can now take on these cases and have the actual training to be able to process these um, cases and hopefully follow them all the way through to prosecution. I think that's where the disconnect lies. We have the laws. We certainly have the perpetrators, but I think prosecuting the perpetrators and applying the laws is where we still have a challenge. And because rape is actually a bit difficult to prove, which, is, which has been one of the things that a lot of lawyers and people who have been victims have clamored for. Mm. Now let's talk about this, the boy, the conversation, Kathy. How can boys be a part of this? How can parents ensure that their children are a part of this? And is he open to the general public? So we, um, we actually offer the Boys Conversation Cafe in all secondary schools across Lagos State. We started with our pilot program in Suleri, which is under the school district four. I'm happy and thrilled to announce that since then, the Lagos State Domestic and Sexual Violence Response Team, the DSVRT, who we're proud members of, have entered a partnership with us. And so we're taking the Boys Conversation Cafe across all six school districts in Lagos State from Brilliant. the next school calendar year. So, you know, any young boy in any secondary school between the ages of 13 and 16, and I believe that's the educational school level of SS1 to SS3, 
will be eligible to be able to participate in the Boys Conversation Cafe. That's so amazing. that's thrilling. That's amazing. Congratulations. Thank and how you. can we also involve parents in this so that parents can start to know the right messages to teach their children, both their daughters and their sons? So with all parents, as with boys and girls, like you rightly said, paying attention, paying attention to that young child, whether it's a boy or girl, that's trying to tell you a conversation or tell you a story that usually involves a caregiver that's well known, many a time a family member. And so we're very quick to speak at our children and not pay attention when they're telling this story that involves an adult or an authoritative figure because we tend to assume that, well, you know, you can't have that right or this is wrong. Well, in actual fact, it's just paying attention, believing the child and then acting on it. You know, it's not enough just to listen to what the child is telling you. Now, let's take it a step further. I mean, it's, it's a crime. It needs to be reported. We have organizations like the Warriors call us. We have a 24-hour free confidential helpline. Exactly. I was going to ask. So there's still people so, who don't want to report because they feel that they won't get help. But thankfully, we're starting to see more cases absolutely. of rape being prosecuted and judgment being delivered. So how can they get help? And what is the first thing they should do? Many people, the moment they're being raped, first thing they're thinking of, they want to clean up, they want yes, to have a and bath. that's the very first thing. I mean, understandably so, because it's a violation. It's a, it's a, it's a, it's a, it's a personal affront. And the first thing you want to do is just wash away any evidence of what's transpired. But from a forensic point of view, that's the first thing that you should not do. Because right now, um, at the Warriors Center, which is a rape crisis center in Yaba, we offer free medical services, one of which is um, forensic medical examinations. We're able to retrieve specimens for DNA. We now have a DNA lab in Ikeja, so we're able to send the specimens to Ikeja. And we now have our first sexual offense court, also in Ikeja. So we're hoping that at this point in time, we're able to offer not just the services, but follow through. <coughs> the other thing that we offer at the center is free um, HIV testing, as well as pregnancy tests. And then we start the post-exposure HIV drugs. Now, both with the forensic medical examination and the post-exposure drugs, they have to be administered within a 72-hour window. And which is another reason why it's important that you seek assistance from a facility such as ours, as soon as this awful act occurs. Fantastic. Thank you so much for sharing about this. So if there's nothing you remember, the fact that if you know anyone that's been raped, the first thing you should not do is have a bath. Please do not have a bath first. Ensure that you contact Warif. And um, how can they contact Warif? So Warif has a 24-hour confidential helpline. The number is 0809-210-0009. I'll repeat that, 0809-210-0009. The Warriors Center is in Yaba. It's number 6 Turton Street, which is a street right behind the Ozone Cinema, which is a great landmark in Yaba. We're open six days a week from 8 to 5 p.m. And as I said, we offer free medical services as well as social workers to address um, the emotional aspect of your concerns and um, social welfare, All right. accommodation, so if you, legal point, aid. They can contact Warriors 24 hours a day. 24 hours social a day. Social media handles as well. Social media handles, we're both on um, the Instagram. We have an Instagram page. We're Twitter, Facebook. It's warif underscore ng. Um, and all the handles are the same. All right. Warif underscore ng and, you know, all the handles on all social media platforms. You've got the number to call. Please, if you know anyone who's been sexually abused, the first thing you should not do is do not have a bath. Call that number. Ensure that you get checked. And the advantage is they can now get evidence and also do testing and, you know, help with post-exposure prophylaxis to reduce the chances of contracting HIV and AIDS. Thank you so much for joining us on the Thank show. You Thank you very so much, much for having Dr. us This again. has been so insightful. Thank you. To enjoy more of this, our Ugonke videos when you just watch, press this button to subscribe on top of our YouTube page. You go love her.